Uh, good day, my name is Nathan Andrews. Uh, I have been involved in the marketplace for many years and I just want to share a word with you of encouragement this morning from a very familiar verse of Romans 8.28 uh, which we all know which says we know that all things work together for good for those who love God who are called according to his purpose. I don't know where you are the, as you listen to this, but I can be pretty certain that you are living in uncertain times because we always do. Whether it's uh, the third wave or the fourth wave or the fifth wave of COVID, whether it's war in some part of the world, whether it's political uncertainty, uh, we're constantly dealing with uh, the unknown. And we are also dealing with outcomes that we don't know how they're going to pan out. Paul sometimes even tells us that we don't even need know how to pray in these circumstances. But what he does tell us in this well-known verse is that there is something we do definitely know. And that is that we do know that all things work together for good for those who love God, who are called according to his purpose. And I just want to focus on those first two words uh, in these next few minutes. Notice that the first two words of the verse are we know. Uh, these words were not necessary to the promise. Uh, the verse would make perfect sense without them. If it had been simply all things work together for, to those who love God, we would still have had a great truth. And in that case, the primary subject and verb would have been the promise itself, all things work. But the Holy Spirit, who doesn't waste words, begins with the emphasis not on what God is going to do, but on what our attitude to it is. The primary subject is we, and the primary verb in this verse is no, right? Romans 8.28 begins with a statement of certitude, underscoring how important it is to God that we claim his promise with total confidence. We don't hope, we don't hypothesize, we don't speculate, we don't toss and turn with anxiety, we simply know. We know God, we know his power, we know his glory, we understand something of his providence, and we can trust his provision. It is certain, fail-safe, inevitable. It's God's guarantee and can never be otherwise. And that is an attitude that runs throughout scripture. The word no occurs 1098 times from Genesis to Revelation. And we are instructed to approach life in the total certainty of the realities of Christ. Job says, I know that my Redeemer lives and that in the end he will stand on the earth. Uh, John writing to the church says, write these things, I write these things to you to believe in the name of the Son of God so that you may know that you have eternal life. The psalmist says, know that the Lord is good. It is he who made us and we are his. We are his people, the sheep of his pasture. The prophet speaking to Ahab says, Know then that not a word of the Lord has spoken against the house of Ahab will fail. And again, John says, Dear friends, now we are children of God, and what we will be has not yet been made known. But we know that when Christ appears, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. Faith is the ability to face life with the assurance that the trustworthy promises of God are as real, if not more so, than the transient circumstances that we find ourselves in. Our faith is not pie in the sky. It's not sticking our head in the sand and hoping for the best. It's the certainty that God will do what he has said. It's being able to confront the uh, perplexities of life from the perspective of his unchanging, unbreakable, unfailable word. We don't hope so. We are certain. Yes, the Bible does talk about hope, but not in the way that it's synonymous with maybe. Biblical hope refers to a sure and certain expectation, which because they're in the future, creates a sense of anticipation. You and I know the end of the story. We know the final score. Michael Faraday, a chemist and physicist, whose experiments in electricity and electromagnetism led to the discovery in 1845, that an intense magnetic field could rotate the plane of polarized light, which then became called the Faraday effect, was dying in 1867. And journalists were keen to interview the great professor. 
and get his last words. One asked him, what are your speculations? Speculations, he replied indignantly. Speculations, I have none. I am resting on certainties. I know who I have believed. Robert Fulgham, who wrote All I Need to Really Know I Learned in Kindergarten, confessed that by the time he was 50, his credo boiled down to a single word, maybe. Christians don't live on maybes. We know our Redeemer lives. We know the truth. We know we have eternal life. We know nothing can separate us from the love of God. And therefore, we know that all things will work to good. Circumstances, not necessarily good. Recent events would tell us that that's not Certainly many of them are not good, but we can be sure that he will indeed work all things out for good. And so my word of encouragement to you is that we focus on that or what we know, the assurance that we have and that that would help give us confidence to go through our life today. May God bless you.